thank you to my friend, the incandescent, the brilliant Andrew Hamilton, the other most popular man named Hamilton in New York today. To the trustees, distinguished guests, and particularly to the family and friends of the graduates of 2016, I hope you feel the basking in the glow of the success of this remarkable group of young people who represent the future of the world. And to the graduates, the class of 2016 at NYU, congratulations! I am truly thrilled to be here as we mark a tremendous achievement for each and every one of you graduates. And I'm profoundly grateful on behalf of a special group of NYU degree recipients. The remarkable men and women on this platform whose lifetime achievements are being recognized Indeed, NYU has deemed worthy of an honorary degree from this great institution. Now, you've heard their credentials, but let me just say, we've got a comedian from Long Island, a brilliant scientist from France, an eminent jurist born in South Africa, the son of Alabama sharecroppers who has become today a civil rights icon. So what brings this eclectic and diverse group of people together at Yankee Stadium on this beautiful day? Well, in all candor, who wouldn't turn down the opportunity who would turn down the opportunity to be with you, to receive an honorary degree from one of the world's greatest universities in one of the world's greatest cities? This day of graduation, this day to acknowledge, it's about acknowledging what you graduates have achieved and what you may yet achieve in the years ahead. This is what brings us together in this moment. It is indeed a celebration of achievement, real hard-won achievement, the kind that takes time and patience and character and determination. The men and women I am humbled to share this platform with today are paragons of this kind of achievement. Their lives, their careers are a testament to the enduring power of persistence, perseverance, humility, and integrity in the pursuit of excellence. They represent achievement that goes far beyond service to themselves. In fact, theirs is the kind of achievement that seeks to serve humanity, that pursues human dignity, justice, and enlightenment. We may know Billy Crystal as the great actor and comedian. And of course, he is a die-hard New York Yankees fan. But what I love about Billy Crystal is how he has used his privilege, his celebrity, to shine a light on those in need, from comic relief to Hurricane Sandy relief. 
In all of his work, he has harnessed humor to heal, to provoke, to challenge us, and to bring us together, and to use his power to speak truth. The brilliant scientist, Emmanuel Charpentier, yes, she is one of the guiding, leading lights in scientific research. And it is true that her achievements around editing genetic code are among the most important scientific achievements of this century. But it was not an easy road for her. She decided early in her career that she wanted to contribute to human understanding of medicine. And along the way, she has achieved that through long hours, incredible drive, and unbridled intensity. And here comes Margaret Marshall. Talk about drive. This young South African, white South African, was on the side of history when she took up the fight to end apartheid in her native country. She came to the United States as a warrior for justice. And from that important perch on the Massachusetts Supreme Court, she changed America. And then there is the inimitable, extraordinary Congressman John Lewis. Congressman Lewis has devoted his life to the pursuit of justice. But there was a time when Congressman Lewis's parents told the young man to focus on school and don't get in trouble. But Congressman Lewis, a young John Lewis, had to get in trouble. He had to get in the way of the injustices that he saw in the American South. And in the process of marching for 50 years, John Lewis has changed America. The four very different paths taken by my fellow honorees all head in the same direction, towards justice. They have lived lives of truth, of sacrifice, of service, and the world is better for it. Would you join me in thanking them and recognizing them for their enormous contribution? So now, graduates, it's time to turn to you. Because I have some questions for you today. I'd like to ask you to reflect in your souls about a set of questions that I hope will be with you as you leave the safety and security of this remarkable university. How will you change the world? What might you achieve that goes beyond yourself? What sacrifices will you make? What service will you render in the cause of justice in the world? As graduates of this great university, you have enormous privilege. And with that privilege comes a responsibility to not just stand out, but to stand for something. Whether you are writing a legal opinion, or editing a genome, or running for office, or literally doing stand-up, stand for something. And never ask your, 
Never ask yourself the question. Never, ever stop asking yourself the question, what might I achieve that goes beyond myself? These are the questions of our time. How can we extend the ladder of opportunity so that more people can sit in these bleachers in the years ahead and experience what you all have experienced? If you do this, if you ask these questions, you will do something worthy of this great institution. You will do something worthy of all of your hard work. So class of 2016, I implore you to believe in Dr. King's vision for a beloved community. It is possible. I challenge you at this critical moment of transition in your lives to commit yourself to getting that job done. Today is a glorious day. Today is to celebrate all that you have achieved and all that you will achieve. Congratulations, class of 2016.